Well, we're 20 weeks into the Biden administration, and Joe got us looking dumb abroad. Last week, we left off with Biden heading to Europe for his first foreign trip. This is Biden's attempt at rebuilding foreign relationships and to have a sit-down meeting with President Putin on the 16th. So let's just recap the foreign trip, shall we? The first stop was the G7 summit. What is the G7 summit? Glad you asked. The G7 summit is a group of seven world leaders, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the UK, and the United States. These world leaders get together to discuss issues plaguing their economies and how them, as a collective, can assist one another. At the end of the meeting, a document called the Communique is published. The Communique outlines what the leaders have agreed upon. This visit, the main topics of concern were COVID and vaccines, handling the pandemic, climate change, and economic recovery. Well, first things first, vaccines. A billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines, starting with 870 million doses of coronavirus vaccines to the developing world over the next year. And despite Bill and Melinda going through a very public divorce, people are counting on the plans presented by Melinda French Gates that will push the vaccines out the lab at rapid speed to get approved within 100 days. Next up, no more coal. The idea of combating climate change and to phase out coal burning was initiated by the U.S. White House. It was said that coal is the world's dirtiest major fuel and plans to phase out coal burning unless it has carbon capture technology. The G7 leaders said that they will offer up $2.8 billion to help cease coal generation, promising to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050, half emissions by 2030, and to conserve at least 30% of land and oceans by 2030. But China doesn't care. China may not be the wealthiest economy, but it is one of the largest and has created a multi-trillion dollar belt and roll initiative that runs on coal in Beijing. China representatives have voiced that the days when small groups of countries decide the fate of the world are long gone. Small groups don't run the world. Next up, Corporations and Big Tech Tax The G7 leaders agreed that there needs to be a global corporate tax increase of 15% on national corporations such as Amazon and Big Tech such as Google and reduce their ability to shift profits to low-tax offshore accounts. The leader said the money collected will be utilized to combat climate change and undeveloped economies. And last but not least, Joe Biden says that America was back at the table and fully, fully engaged. Joe Biden says that he is nothing like the previous president, Donald Trump, who he said believed climate change wasn't an issue. Joe Biden said he will crack down on China and their disregard for human rights, especially with the Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities. On the topic of the COVID lab leak and Dr. Fauci, Joe Biden said, um, We don't know, we haven't had access to the laboratories to determine whether or not, I have not reached a conclusion because our intelligence community is not certain yet, whether or not this was a consequence of a, uh, from the marketplace of a bat and, you know, in, uh, interfacing with, 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 with animals in the environment that caused this, this, this uh, uh, COVID-19 or whether it was uh, an experiment gone awry in a laboratory. Joe Biden said on the topic of Putin that he is an autocrat and he will be meeting with Putin in Geneva and the U.S. and Russia could work together on issues such as covid cybercrime, and conflicts. Well, that wraps up the G7 summit. Joe Biden will travel to Brussels for the NATO and then the EU-US summits. But let's jump straight into why we are all here, the meeting with Vlad Putin in Geneva. Now, we are hoping the two sat down to discuss the multiple cyber attacks, the military aggression, assassination attempts, and human rights violations. 
The meeting with Putin and Biden lasted about three hours. The two leaders sat down to discuss tensions around Ukraine, the treatment of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, recent cyber attacks, and allegations of election meddling. As far as cyber attacks, Biden said, I talked about the proposition that certain critical infrastructure should be off limits to attack, period, by cyber or any other means. I gave them a list. If I'm not mistaken, I don't have it in front of me, 16 specific entities, 16 defined as critical infrastructure under U.S. policy, from the energy sector to our water systems. But why only 16, Biden? This should not be negotiation. What needs to be said is Russia, don't touch none of our shit, period. However, Putin says there is no evidence of cyber tampering on their behalf. And any tampering has been taking place has been from the U.S. There was no agreement from Putin on U.K. joining NATO. The two spoke briefly, but ultimately... Uh, we just touched upon this broadly. And there's nothing to discuss here. But despite all the hype around this meeting, the two leaders said the meeting was very pragmatic, even though it produced modest breakthroughs. Putin said, what's the point of keeping score? It makes no sense to try to scare one another. And Biden says, I don't think he's looking for a cold war with the United States. This is not a kumbaya moment, as he used to say back in the 60s in the United States, like, let's hug and love each other. But it's clearly not in anybody's interest. Your countries are mine for us to be in a situation where we're in a new Cold War. And I truly believe he thinks that. He understands that. But when Putin is pressed on how Russia handles human rights, specifically on the treatment of Alexei Navalny, Putin went for the jugular saying the U.S. should not point fingers when they are abusing people in Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as in the prison camps on Guantanamo Bay. He said Alexei Navalny is a terrorist and was dealt with accordingly. He said he has seen how extreme terrorist individuals and organizations can get, such as the U.S.'s Black Lives Matter, who rioted, looted, and destroyed and he said i don't need your situation he also says how can you call me a killer when your own citizens brought their grievances to the capitol on january 6 and law enforcement was too harsh and they pepper sprayed individuals and a woman got a bullet put in her head by law enforcement so how are we any different than you Damn. Okay, Vladimir. What you got to say, Joe? <laughs> My response is kind of what I communicated. That I think that's a, uh, that's a ridiculous comparison. It's one thing for literally criminals to break through cordon, go into the Capitol, kill a police officer, and be held unaccountable. And it is for people objecting and marching on the Capitol and saying, you are not allowing me to speak freely. Wait, pause. Broke in. Um, roll the tape. Why are you letting this happen? Why haven't you called for backup? Where is your backup? This is our damn Capitol building. And y'all are letting it get destroyed on your watch. Fuck all of you. Call for backup. Get some help down here. And if they don't want to get you fucking back up, they obviously don't give a shit about you. Yeah, nobody broke in, sir. Anyway, Putin says the U.S. carries out its own measures of prevention, just as they do. And yet you believe that we're acting aggressively and somehow you're not. Just look at that. Pot calling the kettle black. Biden says that there will be consequences to pay if Russia doesn't uphold their end of the bargain. But for now... Let's see what happens. 